Jesus answered him, I speak openly to the world. Christ said, listen, I am speaking to the world. We know I ever taught in the synagogue. The world that Christ was speaking to is the people that were in the synagogue. We know and in the temple. And in the temple. Go ahead. Whether the Jews always resort. Whether the Jews always resort. According to the Bible. When you open up the Bible and you read it. The Bible refers to the nation of Israel as the world. The world is not referring to all people. The world is not referring to all of mankind. The Bible is only speaking about one people. Which people? The Israelites. Read that verse again. Jesus answered him. I speak openly to the word. There's no verse in the Bible that you can go to. Where Christ travels to China, he sees the Chinese. Are you a pastor? Right, so you sound like a pastor. The covenant. Give me. No, the covenant. When, when God says. Romans. When Jesus says. So. When Jesus says himself. The whole covenant is no more. Now the new covenant. Wait. Really? Because. No, you do a lot of talking. This is not a pastor hour. We are here to teach you. You're not here. You can't teach us nothing. You can't teach us anything. You do a lot of talking. This is not a Christian church. This is not a pastor hour. You're going to listen or we're going to teach you. Read. Really? Romans chapter 7 verses 12 Wherefore the law is holy Wherefore the law is holy The word holy means separate Read. And the commandment holy God's commandment is holy Read. And The law is holy And the commandment holy And just and good The law is holy The commandment is holy And it's just and it's good, yeah. right? Do you believe? Do you believe that? Right? Mm. You believe the text? I believe the text, man. I believe mm. the text, man. Moses, Abraham, Isaac, and Joseph. But look, I wanna. I, I, so, what do you believe in today? Do you believe in the? Let me ask. Bro, what was? I'm, I'm confused. I'm not. You make you take it too long to ask your question. The all comes to him. I don't know. Oh, no. no. Do we still have the whole covenant? I said, when Jesus Christ come and die, mm. and Jesus Christ said himself, mm. the whole covenant is to move it. It's in the past. So what's the old covenant? covenant? What what was the new what was the old covenant that, that, that was done away with? Yeah, give me that. Hebrews. What was the old covenant that was done away with? Remember now. Remember. We're gonna show you, we're gonna teach you because you don't know. You don't know. You're not doing a lot of talking. A lot of talking, a bunch of nothing. Read. Let's show you what the old covenant that was done away with. Hebrews chapter 10. Ten. Verse 4. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 4. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. So we can explain to you what is going to do. The, the covenant that was done, the Law that was done away with was animal sacrifice. That's why Christ came and become the ultimate sacrifice. So we don't have to sacrifice animals anymore. Right? Therefore, when he cometh into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body as thou prepared me. Christ's body was prepared for the Israelites. Right? So Christ came and sacrificed for the Israelites. Right? So guess what? You know what? Before we used to have to do animal sacrifice, but now we believe on Christ. Right? Yes, he did. Give me Acts. Give me Acts chapter 5 and verse 29. Sound of verse 29. Yes, it is only as well. We're going to show you. We're going to prove to you. No. Well, you ask the question, let me answer. Let me answer. To God's children in the world, that is still a joint concept. Okay, we can deal with that. We're going to deal with that.
to deal with that. First, let me prove that who Christ died for. Me. Acts chapter 5, verses 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. We ought to obey who? God rather than men. So we not listen to your rumbling. We obey God. We read the scriptures and we go by what the scriptures say. Me. So God of our fathers, the God of our fathers, that's specific. Me. Risen up, Jesus, whom he threw and hung on a tree. Him a God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. To be a prince and a savior to whom? For to give repentance to Israel. To whom? For to give repentance to Israel. For the whole world, for all races. For to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. So how we prove what we say? We use the Bible to speak. We use the Bible to speak. What scripture do you have to support what you say? For God so loved the world. Go to it, John G. 16. John G. 16. Where you get John G. 16? Give me Psalms 119 and 104 before you read John G. 16. John G. 16 and then hold that and give me Psalms chapter 119 and 104. The same nation that believes that he was Christ. Brother, man, slow down. You said John 3 16, right? Quote it. Uh huh. But have never lasted in life. Very good. What does John 3 verses 14 say? What does it say? Just so someone that you understand it. What does John chapter 3 verses 14 say? What does what is, what is 14 say? You know how you don't understand the Bible? Because you only pick and choose like the Christians do. So your understanding of John 3, 16 is wrong. But we'll explain it to you. John 3, 16. Get John 3, verses 16. John, chapter 3, verses 16. We never got your name. What's your name? Who? Andre. Andre? Yes. Listen good. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So whosoever believe in Christ would have everlasting life, yes. right? Yes. Who is Christ speaking to? Christ was speaking to Who is he speaking to? Everyone? Everyone? Get John 3 verses 1. I'm going to show you who Christ was speaking to. Relax, relax. Just get this. Take a chill pill. Take a chill pill. Hold on, hold on. Hold. Relax, relax. Andre, I want you to listen. One second. We'll get to that. John chapter 3 verses 1. John chapter 3 verses 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. A man named Nicodemus, the ruler of the Jews, is speaking to Christ when you read the book John chapter 3. Now go to John chapter 3 verses 16 again. St. John chapter 3 verses 16. For God so loved the world. So when Christ said, God so loved the world, who is he speaking to? He's speaking to another Israelite, another Jew. But a lot of you Christians today, you pick and choose verses out of the Bible and you have no understanding of it. Read John 3, 16 again. St. John chapter 3, verses 16. For God so loved the world. So keep in mind, you have two Israelites speaking, two Jews are having a conversation. And Christ said to the other Israelites with them that God so loved the world. Now who is the world? Andre, who's the world? Who is the world? Give me the definition of the word world. The world, my friend, is everyone and everything that lives inside of it. That's everyone and everything. Is that what the yes. Bible says? Yes. Everything. Is that what the Bible says? Give me John 18, verses 20. Same, same book. John chapter 18, verses 20. Hold on, Andre. Listen, let me speak. Let me speak. I'll let you speak. You let me speak. Let's show some manners. We're not angry black people. Let's show, let's have some respect, right? John 18, verses 20. St. John chapter 18 verses 20 Jesus answered him I speak openly to the world Andre you listening? Christ said he's speaking openly to the world You said the world is everyone in it Read that verse again Jesus answered him I speak openly to the world Andre who is Jesus speaking to? No, no Listen, listen, just listen Who is Jesus speaking to? Read that verse again for Jesus answered him I speak openly to the world. Who is Christ speaking to? 
Christ was speaking to. Who was he speaking to? Let's read it again. Listen good. I want you to listen. Jesus answered him. I speak openly to the world. To the who? To the world. Christ is now speaking to the world. The world that God so loved. Let's read on. I ever taught in the synagogues and in the temple. Can the entire population on the face of the planet fit into a temple? Andre, yes or no? Can the entire population on the world be the temple? My brother right here, can I ask you a question? Can the entire population on the planet fit into a temple? The answer is no. So let's read that verse again. Jesus answered him. I speak openly to the world. So Christ said, listen, I am speaking to the world. Read on. I ever taught in the synagogue. The world that Christ was speaking to is the people that were in the synagogue. Read on. And in the temple. And in the temple. Go ahead. Whether the Jews always resort. Whether the Jews always resort. According to the Bible. When you open up the Bible and you read it. The Bible refers to the nation of Israel as the world. The world is not referring to all people. The world is not referring to all of mankind. The Bible is only speaking about one people. Which people? The Israelites. Read that verse again. Jesus answered him, I speak openly to the world. There's no verse in the Bible if you can go to where Christ traveled to China to teach the Chinese. There's no verse in the Bible that you can go to where Christ went to Europe to teach those people scattered there. But Christ said, I am speaking to the world. Read on. I ever thought in the synagogue. Christ said, the world that he's referring to is the synagogue. Who dwelt in the synagogue? Let's read on. And in the temple, where there's the Jews always resort. Only the Jews dwelt in the synagogue. So who is the world when you read the Bible? The world is referred to the nation of Israel, the Jews. Isaiah 45, verse 17. Andre, I want you to listen, because what you're coming with is the slave master doctrine. And we do not support the slave master's doctrine. Read what you got. Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord. The Bible says, I'll read it, we'll read it, let's finish the verse. The Bible says, what, read that verse again. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord. The Bible says Israel shall be saved in the Lord. Read on. With an everlasting salvation, ye shall not be ashamed. Who shall not be ashamed? The Israelites. Read on. No, confounded. World without end. What's the Israelite? World without end. The world in the Bible. The world in John 3, 16 is only referring to the Israelites, the Jews, who Nicodemus was speaking to. So John 3, 16, let's go back to it. John 3, 16, it is not referring to all of mankind. John 3, verse 16, we'll get to the promise, one second. So John, chapter 3, verse 16, for God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. Which world? The world of the Israelites, the world of the Jews. Read on. That he gave his only begotten son. That he sent Christ, the black Messiah. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now give me Romans chapter 9. Let's deal with the promise. You said the promise to Abraham, right? Romans chapter 9. We'll read it. We'll read it. We'll go to Romans 9, then we'll go to Hebrew. 9 verses 3. For I could wish that myself were accused from Christ for my patron, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. You are Israelites to whom pertained the adoption and the glory. The adoption, Christ coming and died for the Israelites, only pertained to one people. The glory which is the kingdom of heaven, only pertains to one people. Read on. And the covenant, the covenants, the Old and the New Testament, only pertain to the Israelites. Read on. And the giving of the law, the giving of the law. Who was the law given to when you read the Bible? The nation of Israel. Read on. And the service of God, the servants of the Most High God is with people, the Israelites. Read on. And the promise. And the what? And the promise. Abraham's promise. 
was only given to the Israelites. Abraham's promise was not given to the Chinese, the Japanese, the Caucasian, or the East Indians. They're not in the promises. The promises is only given to the Israelites. Revelation 2 verses 26. And Andre, you're done. You're done. You're coming with religion. You're coming with Christianity to put us back in slavery. Our days of being mentally enslaved is finished. Revelation 2 verses 26. Chapter 2. Verse 22. Oh, I'm sorry. Revelation chapter 2 verses 26. To prove that only one race of people will receive the promise. Read on. Revelation chapter 2 verses 26. And he that overcometh and giveth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the night. If God loved all people, why did he say he would give one particular race of people power over another race? That's a Christian contradiction because the Bible does not contradict itself. Read that verse again. Revelation chapter 2 verses 26. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works until the end. What do we have to overcome? We have to overcome Christianity. Christianity gives us the image of the beast, which is an idol. So in order for you to be delivered, in order for you to inherit the promises, you must put Christianity behind you. Read on. To him will I give power over the nation. Read up. To him will I what? To him will I give power over the nation. The Bible says Christ would give a particular race of people power over all other people. So how does John 3 16 explain that? No, 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 no. My friend, my friend, listen. How does John 3 16 explain once a particular race of people endured to the end, they would be ruling all other races? Explain that. I'm not talking about Abraham days. I'm speaking about why the read the verse again. Revelation chapter two verses twenty six. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nation. The Bible says once the nation of Israel endure, Christ will give them power over the nations to do what? Let's find out. Read on. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. The nation of Israel will rule all other races with the rod of iron. Read on. As the vessel, vessel of a potter shall they be broken. The cyber, as a pot, as a potter of vessel, all other races will be broken. Why? Because one time you broke us. Prime example, the black man today has been broken mentally. He is still believing in the slave master's doctrine. Now what? He is equal to the peasants. He is equal to a race of people, to all other races of people that God sees as nothing. God sees all other races as nothing when you read the Bible. So how can God say he loves all people? How can God say now that he loves all people? When the Bible says all other races outside you blacks and Amerindians is vanity and nothing. Isaiah 40 verses 17. Let's prove it. Isaiah 40 verses 17. My favorite verse in the Bible. 40, 40 verses 17. Proving that you East Indians, you Chinese, you Caucasians, God sees you as nothing. Be what you got. Isaiah chapter 40. Verse 17, all nations before him are as nothing. The Bible says all nations before the Most High God is as nothing. So as an Israelite man, you will have to be destroyed completely to not want to be as equal to, to another race that's nothing. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, Nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. 
We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.